Well, good morning and welcome to worship at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd, where we are live here this morning in Lexington, Kentucky, for a service of Holy Eucharist. And in our usual pandemic way, we'll light our votive candles to begin worship. We know, of course, that lighting these votive candles is an important rhythm for so many of you when you're able to be here in person. So when you're not, we light them for you. And yet again, my brother, friend, and colleague, Joe Hill, and I have conspired. The first candle, Joe has invited us to light for the Good Shepherd staff, for all of his sibling staff members, with special emphasis and thanksgiving for Grace Mulder and Dale Chapman. The second candle, Joe and I are lighting for those who have been baptized in the pandemic. We had a little COVID careful baptism last week for Ruby Hamilton, our newest baptized member. The flowers this morning are given by her godparents, Wynn and Nancy Stevens. And we've got 15 baptismal candidates in the baptismal queue, which is amazing. And I've been saying we would take that any time, much less in a pandemic. So the church never closes. The gospel is on the move. God is alive and present, building fires of faith in the hearts of all His beloved. There's another baptism this week, so Joe, I think we're exactly right, aren't we, to light a candle for those to be baptized. This third candle, we're lighting for all new life, all the babies we've added. We add folks by baptism, but we've also had a lot of babies born. Um, the latest is the Brooks baby, the Mincarelli babies, Mincarelli babies, and um, Violet Morris. So Andrea and Randolph Morris have had uh, a new little one added to their family, Violet. Big brother Gibbs is proud, no doubt. This fourth candle we light for all our beloved dead. If I have the numbers right, we are approaching half million that we've lost, I think, to COVID-19 and this almost year-long pandemic. We've also lost a lot of other folks due to other causes, and we're aware that it's just darn hard to lose somebody in any time, but harder still to lose them in a pandemic because the isolation, the distancing, it just makes grief a real challenge. Sue Cole, our beloved parishioner, Sue Cole's brother-in-law, Dale, died rather suddenly this week. So Dale is sort of the, the lead saint huh? in all our beloved dead. We light this fourth candle for. Joe, they'll get to a point where they don't even need me to say what the final candle's for, won't they? Y'all know what it is. At home, you could say it with me. The fifth candle is for our theme, love is all. Joe has added a word to the theme this week, love is always all, and he is exactly right. So we will continue singing the opening hymn for this morning is hymn 129.
service continues on page 355 in your books of common prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to You all hearts are open, all desires known, and from You no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love You and worthily magnify Your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship You, we give You thanks, we praise You for Your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to them, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The portion of Psalm 50 appointed for today can be found on page 654 in the Book of Common Prayer. 
We will say it responsively by whole verse. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> Good morning. Would you pray with me? Lord of grace and light, enkindle in us the fire of your love. However cold and gray things are outside, may we be light bearers of hope from all you have shared with us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Transfiguration is a strange word. We don't use it much in our day-to-day -day speech. It is a beautiful word, though, and can be defined as the change of Jesus, the man, into the Messiah, the beloved Son of God, the Christ. The transfiguration is a turning point, a theological pivot for us to see, along with Peter, James, and John, who Jesus really is. It is also an opportunity for us to grow as disciples in order to do kingdom work in the valley below after the mountaintop experience. The mountaintop is a necessary part. Jesus often went up on the mountain or a hillside to pray. 
It is on the mountaintop, after all, where God reveals the true identity of Jesus as the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. Moses gave the law, but Jesus fulfilled the law with grace and truth. Elijah and all the prophets delivered the word of God, but Jesus was the word of God. In today's gospel passage, the disciples move from a state of slumber to one of celebration. Peter wants to build three booths to commemorate the occasion. A booth, or shelter, being a common response to a holy encounter of this scale. Peter wants to worship there and camp out a while. We have our booths, too. Shelters that we hunker down in, we build them in our work relationships, in relationship to ourselves sometimes, in our families and in every other aspect of our lives. The booths we build can, at times, draft us into involuntary lockdowns. Let's just take church, for instance. A booth can look like delivering this sermon so I preach today. Now I think I'm done for the day. Or perhaps the musician who says after their solo, I can leave that behind. A booth can be the way we used to do it. It can be how my church was before, and understandably we want to stay right there, right where the event that changed us happened once upon a time. It's where the experience of being with Christ for the first time or the last time is seared into our memory. But the church is also being transfigured. Because while all those things are fine and worthy enough, they are like Peter's boots, not the whole story. It's kind of like Mardi Gras with all of its floats and costumes. Great for a day, but there's more to come the next day when Lent starts. Transfiguration changes us, and in being receptive to receiving the light of Christ ourselves, we can't be witnesses and agents of change in the world unless we leave the idea of building booths on the mountain and head down instead to the valleys, which is where our Lord is headed to serve, to love, and to heal. Recently, I ordered something online for curbside pickup. As I arrived at the store, I called, and they said it would be just a few minutes. I decided to stand outside my car and stretch my legs a bit, stand up. I lifted my arms up high in the air. I did some twists to loosen my back, and then when I bent over with some fantasy of touching my toes, my cap fell off, which is when my shirt became untucked. <laughs> now next to me in the parking space was a big SUV, and the window was the perfect height to show me I needed to fix my hat hair. It was a great mirror. No sooner had I made myself presentable when an employee approached the car with a package. Jackson, he said. No, I replied. At that point, I hear the window right behind me, that reflective mirror going down, down, down. <laughs> and in the car are two women chuckling pretty hard, sort of a bouncing up and down in their seats chuckling. So I began to laugh, too. We were all laughing at the fact that there was more going on than my reflection. Peter can't see past his reflection of that brilliant moment, Christ's brilliant moment of transfiguration. In other words, building some booths there was more about Peter than Jesus. There was this amazing and divine light, plus God's voice, and those words reminded everyone who heard him, this is my beloved son, listen to him. 
That's baptismal language from Jesus' time in the Jordan River with John the Baptist. And like Elisha from our 2 Kings reading today, asking Elijah for a double dose of holy mojo before Elijah is whisked away in a heavenly whirlwind, all because the ministry ahead for Elisha will require it. In a similar way, the disciples are given the light of Christ in the transfiguration to bolster their faith journeys and every part of their ministry for the rest of their lives. If they are going to be agents of change on a kingdom level, after Jesus commissions them to do greater things than these, they will need something powerful enough, let's say transformational, to hold on to. For a couple of years in the late 80s, I worked in Japan in a small city on the inland side of Mount Fuji. It was a base town for anyone in the world to gather as a group in order to climb Fujisan. Occasionally, we would hear of a search party being sent out to find lost hikers. Hiking groups leave at midnight so they can see the sunrise from the top station. But people who leave the path and their group while hiking through the beautiful and the most alluring portions of the forest can get lost. Some hikers would be found too late the next day, victims of hypothermia and exposure, usually clutching a compass in their hands You see, compasses are drawn to the mountain, and people get disoriented. They become lost when true north is not where the arrow says it is. But if they can find one of the safety ropes installed around the circumference of Fuji for this purpose, they can follow it out of the dark woods to a path that leads down the mountain and to life. The truth about the transfiguration for us is that we have something to hold on to. We can know that there is a light source beyond what we can see. It's not from this world, yet it is very much in this world. It makes a difference. It is real. It's a matter of perspective, Christian perspective. Thomas Merton said, life is simple. We are living in a world that is absolutely transparent and the divine is shining through it all the time. This is not just a nice story or a fable, he says, it is true. We can also take something as simple as a houseplant that after fully absorbing sunlight when observed later with a special filter, can be seen emitting particles of red light waves. The plant that has been in the light shares the light outside of them. They glow. Having Christian radiance from time with the light of Christ means that others can see something different in us, and we, in turn, can see Christ in others a little better. The early church father, Justin Martyr, referred to the sacrament of holy baptism with this term, illumination. Maybe love is all, as we say here at Good Shepherd, is the ultimate icon through which we can see others most clearly. When we baptize in the Episcopal Church, we say, receive the light of Christ. This is the light of God's grace evident in our actions and in our words. It's when we need help now and then when we become lost. That is, until we drop the compasses pointing us elsewhere and recall and search for the line, the path that leads to life. This is the same line of God's love that connects our baptism to those who have gone before us. It's the connection to work of the work of the disciples 
It connects us to the ministry of Jesus. It connects us to the prophets who found that God could call them into all kinds of situations, but would never leave them. God was their line to true life, too. Not just for themselves, but for God's people. With the light of Christ, we go out so that the church, you and me, leaves the building again and again, over and over. This is why our Sunday worship is a continual movement. The flow of worship never stops. After hearing scripture, worshiping with glorious, beautiful music, and receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion, we are ushered out. Well, actually, we're kind of kicked out to serve the world in which we dwell. We go into the sacred and the everyday world because even as our worship has ended, as we say, whether that's Sunday, Wednesday, or morning prayer, our service has just begun. We are living transfigured. We are the glow that others see who want to know the power of Christ's love in the world and hunger for that. We may go up the mountain with Jesus, but we come down the mountain with Christ. Would you pray with me? Lord, send us out into the sacredness of everyday life. Strengthen us to do the work you have for us to do. Light our path with your abundant word, and may your loving mercy be our testimony and witness. Amen. Turning to page 358 in your Books of Common Prayer, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people begin on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please offer your own prayers in the silence after each bidding. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for all bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace.
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prisons. Pray for those in need or trouble. I ask for your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially James and Dale. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for all who travel on land, water, or in the air. Pray for those who are away from home. Your petitions and thanksgivings may be offered silently or aloud, wherever you may be. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer of confession is found on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ. Peace. 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 All right, well, good morning and welcome to worship at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. It is good indeed for us to be together. Lent is upon us, and I have a number of things to draw your attention to. First, what else is going on today? So today is one of our beloved basket outreach ministry in gatherings. So as many of you know, the, the beneficiaries of Beloved Basket this week are Ashland Elementary, one of our partner schools right here in the neighborhood, and the Shepherd's House, which is a residential treatment facility for folks who are suffering with the disease of addiction. So you can go online and see what we're gathering for these two organizations, and then you can bring your offering to the church today from noon to one in our uh, back parking lot drive through When you come, I forgot one of my props, Emery, when you come to the church <laughs> for... <laughs> For, um, to drop off your offering, your outreach, beloved basket offering, you can pick up a Lent to-go bag. Now listen to me, if you don't have an outreach offering, come anyway. Everybody come to the church through the drive through noon to one today, and pick up your Lent to-go bag. Your Lent to-go bag contains about 10 different spiritual practices that were developed by the Good Shepherd staff for your household. No, I'm not trying to make you all into monks and nuns. You're not going to do 10 spiritual practices. But we have 800 members of this church, right? So we're giving you a wide variety of spiritual practices so your household can pick one or 
two or three if you're really trying to be saintly, and adopt those as your household spiritual practice. So what I hope you're going to find, I, th- I think you will find, is, is kind of a diversity of offerings. So some of the offerings in the bag will just not be for you. You don't want to go there. You don't like what Hendry's tried to do with Sermon on the Mount, but you love what Dr. Matilda Middleton is doing with chanting the Psalms. You, you get the point. Pick, pick out of that bag what will work for you. One of the things I want to draw your attention to is something that I think is going to work for everybody. So Diane Griffith and Father John, our pastoral care ministers, have developed a little pastoral care spiritual practice around what we're calling a holding cross. So each one of our Lent to Go bags has one of these wooden holding crosses. You hold it while you pray. And they were all made, some 250, 300 of these were made by Good Shepherd shepherd parishioner uh, David Thompson. So Dave, let that sink in. Dave has made one of these just for your household. Um, So everybody who wants one will have one during Lent. That's just magnificent. The other thing that you'll find in the bag that I want to draw your attention to is a little envelope of ashes. So Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, as you know, and we're not going to be able to be together because we're still red zone COVID surging in, in Lexington. But we're going to have Ash Wednesday services live streamed at 8 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. this Wednesday. So in the bag, because imposing ashes is a big part of the liturgy, is a tiny little envelope of ashes. They're ashes that were gathered from the burning of the palms, which is our tradition, as you know. So there's enough ashes in here for you and your household. And during one of the Ash Wednesday services, I will instruct you in the imposition, and you will impose ashes on your own forehead and the foreheads of of those in your household right there at home. Uh, For a lot of us, it'll be really sad that we can't be together in church. Um, Well, heck, for all of us, it will. But don't let that dim the possibility of, uh, of a meaningful liturgy in our homes that, frankly, we never would have done, right, without the pandemic. So let this be a one-time deal, let it be unique, but, but don't let it not be meaningful. Does that make sense? I have this sneaking suspicion that imposing ashes on each other in our homes is going to be very, very powerful this Lent. That little bag of ashes is stapled to a table of contents that Emory has made that is in your Lent to-go bag. So, come pick it up today from noon to one. You can also pick up your Lent to-go bag if you can't make it today. Anytime this week, uh, weather permitting, I guess, give us a call in the church or just come and call us from the parking lot and we'll make sure you get your Lent to-go bag. I'm also really, really moved and grateful that so many of you have signed up to be Lent to-go bag holy gophers. So we're sending a hundred of these bags out through our Holy Gopher ministers uh, this afternoon and tomorrow to folks who are homebound. So we're getting them out there. Also want to let you know that all the contents, except for the holding cross, are available online. So you can go online to our website, click on the word Lent, and you'll find all the contents of the bag, um, all this print material, these spiritual practices available online. Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday. One of the things I remember about the start of the pandemic was that Shrove Tuesday, if I'm remembering correctly, and I think I am, was the last kind of big event we did here at Good Shepherd. I can see in my mind's eye being with all of you eating pancakes in the Undercroft. We can't do that this year. So do something funky, do something crazy, different at your house, whether it's Brenner, breakfast for dinner, pancakes for supper, whatever it is. Do something different on Tuesday night with the beloveds in your own home. Um, If you live alone, call a friend, have a Zoom breakfast, I don't know, FaceTime breakfast for supper. Set something apart on Tuesday evening for fun before we descend into the depth of meaning that is Ash Wednesday. And then we'll observe a holy Lent together, these 40 days that lead us to Easter season. One little word about the pause. So we're still in a pause of in-person gatherings because the cases in Fayette County are, are up in red zone. However, as you know, you're watching them like I am, they're going down. So not only have we plateaued, but we're declining. So what the medical team is hopeful about, and I am also very hopeful about, is that February will be a planning time to resume in-person gatherings in March should the cases continue to go down and deliver us into orange zone status. So our tentative plan, 
tentative, tentative, tentative. It is a draft plan. My friend Kat is here and knows all about draft plans because she runs a grocery store. So our tentative plan is to resume small in-person gatherings on Sunday, March 7th. Cross your fingers, say your prayers, watch the numbers with us. I will let you know if that tentative plan becomes concretized and you'll see signups online and this sort of thing. And we're going to start small and go slow in two-week increments, opening up further and further as the cases decline. I've written about this. You can find it in parish notes on our website. Emory, I think I'm getting to the end of these announcements and you're saying mercifully so, I know. Emory always wants me to point you to the digital connect card. Um, if you're new, we want to know who you are. We want to know how to connect with you. So go to our website, click on the welcome button, then the I'm new button. Give us your information and you'll be in direct contact with a member of the staff. We will have morning prayer during Lent at 8 a.m. via Zoom. We're going to add a spiritual practice to it, one of our Lenten practices. So do consider making morning prayer joining us. What, uh, once a week? twice a week, every day, any amount of time for morning prayer during the season of Lent. I want to thank all of you who make sure the church never closes by the strength and grace of your online giving. The online giving button is up now. It is our tradition in this place. Do you all know Amy Bridges? Amy Bridges is one of my new heroes. She's our tech assistant. She helps Emory make this broadcast happen, and she's come up with a solution that y'all can't see. Give me that, Amory. Give me that that y'all can't see. I sometimes get carried away, Kat, and I forget the the, uh, birthday prayer. So Amy has made a prop for me. She just put it on her head to remind me of the birthday prayer. This is her prop. Emory says, I'm not supposed to be so silly online. It is our tradition in this place to offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving to those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. And I have a list. I have three birthdays, Nancy Stevens, Lucy Cox, and Terry Graves. There are others out there who are celebrating birthdays. I don't know who you are, but you do stand where you are. And if you want your name read during this worship service, send it to us. We will read your name. Anniversaries also. I don't have anybody on my list, but I suspect somebody out there got married this week at some point. So if, if you did, stand where you are in congregation. Let's pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord. As their days increase, may they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, here are your beloved sons and your beloved daughters gathered in the church of all creation, celebrating the anniversaries of their births and their weddings. May the love that has carried them this far in life fill them to overflowing on this day and carry them all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One last blessing we need to do. Joe, will you please bring out our quilts? As you all know, since the early 1980s, we've had a very robust uh, quilt ministry of this parish. Our quilters have made more than 4,000 quilts in these decades of their ministry. And this is the latest batch, so it is our tradition to ask God's blessing upon them. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the robust ministry of our Good Shepherd quilters. They have kept folks warm over many decades by the power and grace of their ministry. Here is yet another offering. We ask your blessing upon it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May these quilts as they go out from this place be a sure and certain sign, symbol, and remembrance, O God, of the healing power of your love. Amen. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor due His name, bring offerings and come into His courts with praise.
Eucharistic Prayer B begins on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you've caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his, his death, death. We, we proclaim his, his resurrection. resurrection, we await, we await his, his coming, coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Prayer for the act of spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though many in our midst cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we have all received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion by the power of the Holy Spirit. May we embody your desire 
and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Post-communion prayer is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have sped us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved friends, life is gift and life is short. Well, you see, we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the road with us. So may we be swift to love. May we be quick to laughter, to dancing, to helping, and to hope. And may we make haste to be kind. And indeed, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.